हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर सुशांत भांजा योर पेडियाटिक सुपर स्पेशलिटी फैकल्टी ऑफ एटम्स लर्निंग नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द रिसेंट ईयर क्वेश्चन न्यूनोटोलॉजी आई एन आई सी टी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री अक्टूबर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस बिफोर दैट देर इज अ डिस्क्लेमर द क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस डिस्कशन इन पेडियाट्रिक्स बेस्ड ऑन द टॉपिक्स विच आर बीन आर्स इन रिसेंट आई एन आई एस एस and any resemblance to them is purely coincidence and by chance so the first question all are bad prognostic factor of acute bacterial meningitis option 1 infants younger than 6 months option 2 with a high bacterial burden and csf seizure occurring less than 4 days into the therapy and with coma on presentation so among these the answer That is seizure occurring more than four days when the child is under the therapy. So this is the answer. Others are bad prognostic factor. That is infants younger than six months with a high bacterial burden in the seizure and coma on presentation. All are bad prognostic factors. So the answer is seizures. So these are the points or frequently asked questions. That is. Acute bacterial meningitis with post prognosis. I have discussed less than six months, high bacterial burden, and seizure occurring more than it is more than four days, more than four days, and coma or focal neurologic sign on presentation. But there is no correlation between duration of symptoms before diagnosis of meningitis and outcomes. This should be remembered. And the antibiotic therapy reduced the mortality by ten percent. CBR neurodevelopmental outcome in 10 to 20 percent, some neurological sequelae in 50 percent, and the highest mortality seen in pneumococcal meningitis, and the most common sequelae of bacterial meningitis is sensory neural hearing loss. And among these, most common of any agent is pneumococcal meningitis and H influenza pneumococcal meningitis. So these are all frequently asked question. Now on to the next question. Which of the following rash does not occur in Kawasaki disease? Okay, so which of the following rash does not occur? First option, macular. Second, articular. Uh, articular. Third is morbilliform. Fourth is vesiculobulous. So there is a dictum. If there is vesiculobulous lesion or vesiculobulous vesicular rash, so Kawasaki disease is unlikely. This is written in Nelson, and The various type of rash can be seen in Kawasaki disease written in the previous book, the PG textbook. So rashes in Kawasaki can be macular, maculopapular, articular, scarlatic form, morbidly form, but never vesicular. So this is the very important. Another dictum: It is Kawasaki disease is unlike unlikely if there is exudative conjunctivitis, exudative pharyngitis. Ulcerative oral lesion, vesicular rash, generalized adenopathy, and splenomegaly. So this is Kawasaki should should be ruled out. So this is very very important for MCQ. Now moving to the next question: A glycogen storage disease with neutropenia seen in which type of glycogen storage disease? So you know the glycogen storage disease one is divided into one A and one B. And the one B characteristics finding is neutropenia with recurrent infections, and there are odontal lesion, periodontal lesion, and inflammatory bowel disease. So this is the answer will be one B. Answer is one B. So the patients with GSD have the recurrent bacterial infection from neutropenia, periodontal disease, and inflammatory bowel disease is the additional finding in one B. Now moving to the next question. A TB reactivation seen in which drug? So TB reactivation seen in infliximab. So this is a drug that is important. That is infliximab. So it is a tumor necrosis factor. So I have just to recapitulate the most common adverse effect of infliximab is injection site reaction and. DNA blockage is associated with increased frequency of severe systemic infection, including sepsis and 
dissemination of the lateral tuberculosis. This is very, very important. And this table is very important for the MCQ purpose. That is the major side effect of naproxen, that is pseudoporphyrin tinnitus, ibuprofen for accepting meningitis, glucocorticoid avascular necrosis, methotrexate, there will be interstitial pneumonitis, alopecia, and elevated LFT, and diplonamide peripheral neuropathy. Chloroquine, you know, hydroxychloroquine, retinal toxicity, QTC prolongation, sulfur cell agent, Steven Johnson syndrome, and TNF, that is the TB testing lipotherapy, lupus like syndrome, and leukocytoplastic vasculitis, and injection site in reaction is the most common side effect of the TNF alpha, that is the infliximab. Okay. So, other than this, the option was given, that is the interleukin 6, the side effect is dyslipidemia and thrombocytopenia. And anakinran, canakinibab, the side effects is vertigoid headache and rilonacep, there will be dyslipidemia. So, this table is very, very important. Now, moving to the next question. According to the neonatal resuscitation program, the steps of intubation should be completed within approximately, so it is 30 seconds. So, intubation should be completed within 30 seconds. So, this is the dictum. That is Steps of intuition should be completed in approximately 30 seconds. This is written in NRP latest guideline.